Hello and welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'll talk about how I passed CCIE. CCIE, or Cisco Certified Internet Working Expert, is one of the most recognized certification around the world, especially if you are on the networking and uh, IT world. It's a huge milestone if you are in the field of networking or security and you would get more credentials and you would get more recognition by achieving this target. Up until this point, this exam has been passed by 67,000 people around the world. It was launched since 1991, so which makes it one of the most difficult exams in the world. However, achieving this one would definitely give you credentials and recognition in the market. However, knowing that this exam is one of the most difficult exams in the world doesn't mean that it's impossible to pass it. It means that you need a special person to pass the exam. And when I mean special, this doesn't mean that you are talented somehow. No, this exam requires lots of dedication and expertise. So I would say that you need around five years of experience in the networking field before you take your first attempt to passing the exam. because. This exam relies on your expertise, not that something you learn in a few months and you think you will become an expert. No, an expert is someone who has gone through lots of troubleshoots and lots of um, implementation experiences and learned from their mistakes that gains up the experience. So when you face an issue, you know how to solve it because you had seen it before. What's also worth mentioning is this exam requires lots of dedication. And when I mean dedication, doesn't mean dedication needs to be from one side. No, there are so many parties involved in this. You have your life, your family, your work, your friends and social life, and all needs to know that you have something very important to go through and they need to know you will be away from them. Knowing that you work from nine to five, then you go home, you have some lunch with family, you spend some time with family, then you start your another day. You start your day of preparation, maybe from 7 p.m. up until 12, then you have, good, you have to go to sleep to wake up to work another day, which makes having enough time to go with friends or going to ceremonies and weddings and seeing friends and having fun, you need to sacrifice all of that. However, at the end, let me say, it all pays off. So all sacrifices you will do, they will pay off at the end when you achieve your target and you get your five magical number. All right, knowing how important the exam is, let's now discuss how do we prepare or how do we start the journey of becoming a CCI. Well, before, people have been taking the gradual steps from CCNA, CCMP towards CCI after some time, so they would have built their knowledge base by time. However, you can make this journey shorter. You can just join a a course or training for four months training. It's called zero to hero or end to end training, which gives you actually everything you need to know to become an expert. However, let me emphasize on this. I don't think that having a four months course will make you an expert. It's the dedication of work and labbing and preparing that gains up the experience. So four months of training and four hours every day of continuous labbing and studying and deep knowledge, that will gain up the experience to make it shorter to achieve your CSIE or become an expert. However, at Nitish Sharma Simplified Learning, we provide this training, end-to-end -end training from zero to hero. We teach you everything you need to know to become an expert. However, let me just say that again, this depends on your dedication as well from your end. Every two hours of lectures, have to be met by four hours or more of labbing and studying what you have learned gradually or regularly so you can keep up with the knowledge and don't forget things. In my opinion, the only prerequisite for you to join this training or to start your career is having CCNA routing switching equivalent knowledge to start your CSIE security. Because the CSIE security focuses on the security aspects of networking and it doesn't teach you the basics of networking routing and switching and IPs and subnetting and access list and all of that. You need to know these. You need to know spanning tree. You need to know the basics of networking. Then you can start up diving into the security world 
that you will start learning from scratch. The next thing I would suggest you do is log into Cisco um, website and downloading the exam blueprint, having a look at the exam curriculum, what are the topics, what needs to be configured, what do you need to, uh, to understand, to describe networking design, network implementation, different implementation scenarios that would actually help you through passing the exam. Because if you don't know what you're being examined for, then it makes it hard for you to prepare. So having a look at the exam blueprint is kind of essential for you to know your boundaries and what you should prepare for to become an expert. In the end-to-end -end training course, you will learn everything you need to know for the CCIE. So basically, we have around seven to eight modules. We start by teaching you firewall. So you need to know firewall, firewall concepts. How does it work? Security levels and default behavior of the firewall, the inspection. Then you start by learning the access control list and how can you allow traffic from uh, different zones. Then we dive at the NAT, network address translation, different implementations, types, and scenarios to achieving solutions with NAT. And after that, we actually migrate to policy-based routing. You need to study how to make different policies and you should learn the MPF framework or module policy framework. That makes it easier for you to make decisions based on source or destination. Also, high availability is one of the most important topics in the networking field because if you have one, you have none. So you need to have two. So if one goes down, you still act it. For the high availability, you would learn the active standby, the active active implementation. How can you load balance traffic between two firewalls working at the same time? Then you move to clustering, how to gather firewalls together to make them function as one. Then you move to module two. You start by learning cryptography, the art of cryptography, cryptographic analysis, how can you differentiate between encryption, hashing, learning the CIA triad, different definitions for viruses, malwares, trojans, worms, and ransomwares. Then you move to studying the public key infrastructure or the PKI, how certificates work, what is certificate authority, digital certificates or digital signatures before you deep dive into the VPN. Because everything I said before is an introduction to VPNs and cryptography. Well, after that, we start by introducing you to the IPsec framework. How does it work? What's the role of IC and ISACAMP and the ESP authentication header, the data plane, control plane, configuration wise, how everything correlates together. After that, you start by implementing VPNs. So give, getting the page knowledge is kind of crucial before you start implementation. Because I remember previously when I was told to create a VPN, I would just do it. I have the configuration memorized or I have them pre-scripted for in an, a notepad. I would do it and it would work. However, if you have been introduced to a VPN where you need to troubleshoot something, if it's not working, and you don't have an access on the other side, then it makes it difficult or almost impossible for you to figure out what's the problem and how can you fix it without relying on the other side. That's why getting the knowledge or the base, how everything works, is important for you to becoming an expert. Final step, you start by learning configuration. What are the steps needed? How can you troubleshoot stuff? How to verify things? And then you gain more knowledge into the VPN. We deep dive into IPsec VPNs side to side, GRE VPNs, GRE over IPsec, IPsec over GRE, static VTIs. Then you move to DM VPN, where you learn MGRE, NHRP, and finally work with Flex VPN with IC V2. Well, on top of that, you learn the remote access VPNs. Remote access is one of the most important VPNs implemented today because people have been uh, started working from home, so which means remote access is kind of essential for you to to gain access to a corporate to access the servers and their uh, LAN. We start by introducing you to the SSL and TLS protocols, how they work behind the scenes, what's the concepts of SSL and TLS. Then you start implementing the web VPN. After that, we get introduced to the AnyConnect VPN, to the client base, and you can start working with configuring full tunnel, split tunnel, and also know how to use IPsec uh, with IQV2 instead of SSL in that one. Finally, we can deep dive into achieving multiple policies for different users and hiding the tunnel groups so you can become 
uh, an expert of applying policies customized for any organization you might face. Also, what's worth mentioning is you get introduced to the no NAT or NAT exemption, which plays a very important role in the VPN on the production wise. By the end of phase two, you just move to module three. Module three is Cisco wise. Cisco wise is one of the most important topics for you to cover in your CSIE because it represents around 25% for the exam total marks, which makes it kind of important because it integrates or collates with everything. We learn how to integrate ICE with firewalls, switches, routers for device administration or network access, and then you can make custom policies. We revise the VPN, how to integrate firewall with ICE for identity service uh, management as a centralized identity source to configure different policies based on the custom needs. Then we learn the profiling in ICE, how to profile devices, how to make sure devices are not spoofing their MAC address to pretend to, pretend to be a printer or IP phone. You learn the AAA uh, uh, server, authentication, authorization, and accounting. What's the role and function of everything? How can you make different authentication, authorization policies, viewing logs, and troubleshooting scenarios into ICE? Then you move to understanding profiling. How can you profile devices? And finally, we migrate to understanding uh, Cisco Trust Tech to make different policies based on security group tags and learning MACSEC for layer two encryption. We focus on uh, posturing. How can you um, understand the status of a machine? Is it compliant with the company policy to make them access the network or not? And then you move to guest management and bring your own device to configure or determine devices that access your network. After that, we migrate to studying the next generation firewall or the Firepower firewall, which is the Cisco's new firewall replacing the traditional ASA. We study the traditional uh, ASA before because it makes the base for the next gen firewall. Next gen firewall, you'll learn how does it work, what are the engines behind it, the history of firewalls, and then we deep dive into configuring different policies, um, learning uh, how to achieve mostly everything we've done on the ASA, how can we interpret that on the firepower. Moreover, we study the IPS engine, how can we prevent attacks, identify attacks, and prevent data lake uh, protection from users leaking the data outside of the organization, or preventing the network admins from looking at sensitive data when they are monitoring traffic. Also, we study how to implement file control or files, uh, checks on malwares, viruses, trojans, torrents, blocking some applications on the application layer, layer seven policies. How can we integrate Firepower with Cisco ICE to achieve uh, identity management and make dynamic policies? Also, we discuss the life of a packet. So when a packet enters the firewall, how uh, does it get processed from the end until it's reaching the exit or um, exit interface. You also get to look at the uh, stealth watch for traffic monitoring and live analysis with NetFlow. So you can monitor traffic and make policies or achieving uh, some layer of protection and getting um, reports of what traffic you see in your network. Finally, you have to study the Python for network automation as a network engineer. Networking is evolving, networking are getting bigger. You need some way to automate your work and not have to do everything from scratch in a large environment. So learning Python is kind of crucial for you to grow up your networking careers because in today's world, networking is kind of emerging, uh, sorry, programming is kind of emerging with everything and it makes a huge role in the networking world. Well, after that, we focus on WSA or the web security appliance. We study proxy, how can we control web traffic from entering um, our organization? How can we filter traffic based on what we want? How can we redirect web traffic from the routers, which is firewalls, to the WSA uh, uh, server so we can control that web traffic? You learn the basics of WCCP, how does it work? How can we achieve traffic redirection, transparent proxy, and uh, explicit proxy? So we can deep dive into URL filtering and other aspects in the web. So after gathering all the exam blueprints and prerequisites and 
learning these technologies, implementing them in labs or even in production if you have access to devices. Well, after that, you start by preparing for your exam. Knowing that the exam lasts for eight hours, it's split into two sections, three hours for design, five hours for deploy, operate, and optimize to configure devices and make different policies based on the exam requirements. What you should know about preparing for the exam that exam is tough. So it's not easy to look at two monitors for eight hours continue. The exam is kind of difficult. So it requires lots of preparation. What you also should know is that sleep is very important before your exam. You need to have enough sleep, eight hours or more if you feel like. So you need to be relaxed the day before exam. I suggest you don't touch any devices one day before your exam. So don't do labs, don't prepare. Just have a clean mind, go see some friends, forget about the exam. Think somewhere else. Don't think about exam at all. So when you go to the lab, you will have a fresh start and you just remove the um, anxiety. Also, I suggest that you um, take a hotel which is very close to Cisco so you don't spend um, more time worrying about how can you go to the Cisco uh, building. And also, I suggest you go to see Cisco building one day before exam as well so you can know your door, which door will, will you be entering to take the exam. Also, it's very important to have a good breakfast that day of your exam. I know you're feeling uh, stressed, you don't feel like eating, but it's kind of important. It's essential for you to eat well because you will have to stay until 12 or 12.30 to take your lunch. And spending more time worrying about the exam, you're going to feel hungry. Drinking enough water is very important to keep yourself hydrated and keep your brain uh, functioning properly the day of, of your exam. I also suggest spending some time on the fast typing. So you can just look up websites like uh, Tin Fast Fingers, uh, Monkey Type, and KBR. I'll make sure I type those on screen or leave them on the video description. Another point that you need to know is that you don't need to solve everything to pass the exam. For example, if you haven't prepared for some topic, you can just leave that question and focus on something else. Also, when you troubleshoot anything in the exam, sorry, let's imagine you're doing something, you're configuring VPN, it doesn't work. Don't spend more than five to seven or 10 minutes maximum of troubleshooting that task. Just leave it, go do something else, configure other stuff, then come back to it if you have the time. So don't waste your time on a single task because you will fail at the end. You just need to know how to manage your time and be able to focus on achieving the most uh, critical points because you have access or you can see each task, what are the points for that. So let me summarize by saying, achieving a CCIE or becoming an expert, it takes lots of dedication and sacrifices. It takes time, money, and relationships to achieve CCIE. However, at the end, it all pays off. If your friends are fat, if if your friends do not like that you are away with them, then let me tell you, they have to be prepared for this or let's just say they're not really your friends. Everyone around you need to know that you are going through something major, a very major step in your career and they need to help you pass the exam. Again, at the end, it really pays off. Every money that you spend, every hour you spend learning, is a huge benefit for you before even achieving CCIE. Getting the knowledge is more important than getting a certification hanging on the wall. That's why make sure you invest in yourself with learning things before you think about certification. So I hope you have uh, found this video useful. I just tried to shorten the previous video where I explained my journey towards CCIE. I hope you've enjoyed this video. See you on the next one.